Let's add custom markers to a map using Mapbox GLJS. A custom marker is an HTML element placed above the map and anchored to a specific geographic position. This means as a user moves around the globe, the marker will follow around with him. And because the marker is an HTML element, we can easily customize it using CSS and images. To get started, let's first walk through the four things you'll need to follow along with this tutorial. One, the related written guide, add custom markers in Mapbox GLJS, linked in the description below. Two, an IDE or code editor. Three, a Mapbox account which you're logged into. And four, some familiarity with front end development. Now let's get started with step one, create an HTML file. Let's create a new HTML file and name it index.html. Then let's open the file in your code editor. This file will store the code we'll use to render our maps and markers. And now let's move to step two, initializing our map. Let's add a map to our project so we have something to anchor our markers to. To do this, copy and paste the code from step two of the written guide into your index.html file. This code snippet will initialize a Mapbox GLJS map with the specified options in the container div. The container div is then stylized with CSS to fill the screen. Once you've pasted the code, check the on line 37 Mapbox GL access token is assigned to your public access token. The value assigned should start with PK. If instead you see your Mapbox access token, log into your Mapbox account in the browser and then copy the code snippet again. Your access token is automatically added to code snippets in the Mapbox documentation when you're logged into your account. Now, once all your code's added, open your index.html file in the browser and you'll be able to see the Mapbox GLJS map in your browser window. Now let's move on to step three, load the GeoJSON data into your file. GeoJSON data stores information such as building locations and navigation paths. In this step, we'll add a GeoJSON data structure to our code with the locations of where our markers should be rendered on the map. This is not required. You could use hard-coded points instead, but GeoJSON is great for formatting and standardization, so we highly recommend using it. To add the data, scroll to line 43 of your code where it says code from step 3 will go here and replace the comment line from the code of step 3 of the written tutorial. Now you'll be able to access the data in your JavaScript code. One quick note about GeoJSON files, since we only have two locations, we were just able to add the data to the script element in our HTML file, but if you have a larger GeoJSON data set, you may want to load it from an external file instead. Now let's move on to step four, add default markers to our map. Markers are created as HTML elements positioned to a fixed geographic location on the map to mark a point of interest. Let's start by adding a default marker first, and then we'll customize it in step five. To do so, we'll need to include the JavaScript that will create the markers and attach them to the map. First, copy the code from step four of the written guide and replace the comment that says code from step four will go here. This is located in the script in the body of the HTML file after the end of your map object declaration, but before the closing script tag. This code will loop through each feature in your GeoJSON data, grab the locational information, and call the Mapbox GL marker class to add a default marker to each location in the data. Now, if you save your HTML file and refresh the browser, you'll see two default markers on the east and west coasts of the United States. Now let's move to step five, customize and style your markers. First, let's make an HTML DOM element for each marker. To do this, copy the code from step 5-1 and paste it where it says code from 5-1 will go here. Next, let's pass the empty divs into the markers constructor. To do so, replace the code on the line that ends with replace this line with code from step 5-2 with the code from that step. This will replace the code that created the default markers and create the reference to our new custom marker instead. Now that we've passed the HTML element, let's style our markers by specifying the style of the marker so the div renders something at each point. To do so, copy the CSS code from 5-3 of the written tutorial and paste it in the header of your HTML file at line 29 where it says code from step 5-3 will go here. This CSS adds an image to the markers and adjusts them to a uniform size of 50 by 50 pixels. It also changes the image of your cursor when the user hovers over the element so they know that they can interact with that element. So now when you refresh your browser, you should see the two markers appear again on the coasts with the new image. And now with this render, let's move to step six, adding pop-ups to our markers. Adding a pop-up to your marker will allow your users to click on a marker and display additional information in a pop-up. To add this functionality, copy the code from step six and paste it where it says code from step six will go here right above the ending script tag. This code displays the title and description properties of your point of interest, but you can customize this data as desired to include more information for your users. So now let's move to step seven, stylizing your pop-ups. To add the style, copy the CSS code from step seven and paste it where it says code from step seven will go here. This should be inside the style tag below the dot marker declaration. And now if we save the file and refresh the browser, you can interact with your markers and our additional information 
system will pop up with its own stylization. Thanks for watching and see your other Mapbox tutorials for more Mapbox content. Thank you.